Alright, so this is just going to be a simple attack animation. Uh, I don't have anything for the downwards kick input yet, so I've got the player object here. This is the actual rig that it has. Um, you can see oh, there's like a sprite for the upper arm, lower arm, and I manipulate those at runtime. So, animations folder, create uh, animation, let's call it, I don't know, ground stomp. Let's just do stomp. Okay, another time, open the animation. Stomp should be 12 samples per second. Uh, open the animator. Make sure it's for the player. So this is where all the ground attacks are for the player stored. These arrows are trans transitions back towards the idle pose. Uh, those will be automatically interpolated and keyed. So stomp, copy the transition parameter. Transition, state machine, base layer. Let's see a base layer. Paste it both just so it happens right at the end when the player's action will blow at the end. The base layer, as you can see here, is just a bunch of different animation states. Wall slide, jump, dash, like forward and backwards, things like that. Uh, ground attacks don't need transitions because we transition to them via script, not by setting these parameters and letting the animator calculate which state to go through based on the parameters. Anyway. So we've got, now if we select the player, since we added the ground stomp to the state machine, it should show up in this menu here of all the animations available. There's it, there it is, stomp. All right, so it's empty, no keys, hit record. Uh, so for the stomp, let's see, what do we want? Uh, first, turn off the rotation constraint on the left foot so it can rotate freely, it's not snapped to the ground angle. So the left foot should be raised or the far foot should be raised, like that, and then it's just going to be extended down in like a stomp on the ground, like out forwards, and then this leg's going to bend back, like that. Basic stuff, um, but to help with the wind up, it might be better if the player sprite is flipped, so we do that, and now it looks like the player's like turning backwards and winding up for the stump. Uh, so we do that. Uh, I'll just maybe keep this facing the other way. Actually, no. Let's make the head face the other way. So she's looking forward and then getting ready to stump. So that that like we're only gonna have like one or two anticipation frames. So you can really you really gotta push the rig to like I don't know convey the wind up. Uh, that should be slightly higher in the layer, okay. Okay, so if you're winding up for the back foot, the opposite arm should go up. Okay, maybe something like that. Maybe lean back a little bit too, go up. Uh, have this foot. Also turn off the rotation straight, stand on the tiptoes. Okay, and then the next keyframe, that's one keyframe, and the next one is going to be the stomp itself. Uh, so let's first of all flip it back to normal and flip the head. Uh, so back with that way. You can see, you can sort of make it the player pivoting on the back foot, on the front foot which becomes the back foot, so we can put that there. Oops, move the chest rig down a little bit, put that back so it's behind the leg sprite, have it extended out like that, that one comes back a little bit because this player's going to be transferring down, uh, let's see, move the hips there, so it looks like they're pivoting on the same spot, okay, have them bend forward with the impact, that arm gets twi- oh shit. This arm gets twisted back like that. With the rotational momentum. Maybe this hand, the fingers can get splayed out too. Uh, that one. Okay. Then, this arm comes forward. Wait. Sorry, I'm like standing up and trying to act it up. That. That arm, yeah, okay. This arm should actually be back. 
like that because it's rotating behind the player. This one should be coming forward. That one I can remove the key for the sprite there. Uh, front hand sprite. Okay. Uh, this one comes forward. Let's increase the layer of all those so the hand can come across the body. Oh, that looks really weird. Hmm. I might do away with the turn, to be honest. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Oh shit. Deselected the player and cancelled the animation. Okay, so we got stomp like that. Okay, yeah. Let's actually get rid of that. So we don't care about the back bicep stuff anymore. Put that as default, okay. Let's just make it a straight down straight down stomp. Alright, there we go. The thigh can be I guess how much where's the good point for how much energy you want to put in the stomp? I guess let's just make it perpendicular for now. Maybe a little bit forward, like that. There we go. Uh, do away with the flip to begin with, also with the head. Alright, so yeah, now you can see the issue with the legs is that it looks like, oh, the legs have switched positions. Fear not, that's as simple as just moving the back leg there. the torso down a little bit oh yeah also that doesn't need to be in front anymore so for a stomp hmm, maybe we could just bring both biceps up I wonder that work Yeah, and then just push both of them back because it's sort of a symmetrical motion. Uh, let's see. Maybe add a little bit of twisting. Where's the sprite for like three quarter turn? Here we go. Or not three quarter turn, but you know what I mean. Uh, just turn a little bit further away. Okay. Bring the more wings more forward there on that. Alright, so this is going to be. That's the wind up pose. And then that's going to be the actual stomp. So on the impact frame, uh, I'm going to want to push the rig a little bit more and then have it kind of settle back to a place like that. So let's move that there. So now we have, oh shit, I rotated one of the legs wrongly. You can see, I guess it's kind of hard to see. Uh, Yeah, that's not right. What that's what's going on there? Um, I think I need to subtract or add 360 degrees. Oops, that's 360. There we go. And that should rotate correctly. Yes, very good. Okay. Anyway, so then we fix that. Uh. That's okay, so that's going to be the idle relaxation pose. Uh, press K to key everything that's animated there, and then copy and paste it there. So, this left tangent needs to be constant. That way, if you look at the curves, it's sort of hard to see right now. But the curves describe the transitions, so it's just like... I'm, I sure, I'm sure you're familiar with the Bezier handles, so usually it looks like that, curved. And like that, they're straight. So if we go back to the dope sheet and move the keyframe out, it's always constant. And then when the frame hits, it snaps to that rather than the smooth motion that you saw earlier. So we're gonna just exaggerate this a little bit, forward, all the way. Maybe push the uh, foot up a little bit. Um, and also bend the right foot back a little bit. <sighs> Jesus. That's, that's maybe a little bit much, but who cares? Uh, that. Bam. Uh, 
Okay, so the hips are the root of the player rig. So we want, okay, the back foot's there. I'm just like sticking my finger on the screen to track it, okay. So the real question is what to do with the arms. Should the arms be halfway to their end point here or should the arms snap back and then go forward a little bit? I think the arms should be forward slightly. That's too far forward. Okay, that's fine. Uh, maybe a couple more frames of wind up. So what we do for that is go to the uh, player idle, copy the keyframes from that, go to stomp, uh, and paste them in there. We don't care about the capsule collider. Uh, all right. So then if we move this out a little bit, we get a nice wind up. Uh, that's automatically interpolated for us. So we don't want to actually have the full wind up because that takes a little while. So maybe let's get, that's a good starting point for a wind up. So press K, just grab the keyframes of everything there, delete the beginning part. So now we have this. Now the windup looks like that. Uh, so it looks like the right legs or the back legs moving backwards there. You see that? We don't really want that. Um, <clears throat> and also the hips are kind of low, or the leg is clipping through the floor. So. Just move it like that. So that player is leaning up and forwards, and then bam, they come down for the stomp. Let's actually move the hips forward a little bit. All right, so then that's the basics of it. We don't need to take care of anything else, really. I mean, sure, we can just hold the pose here for a little bit, and then it'll transfer back to idle. Um, automatically. I don't need to uh, animate the transformation back to the idle stage. Um, so we got that. Uh, I do want to add, let's see, I have an attack streak which looks like that. Uh, so I think I'm just gonna make it, oops, I don't want it to be active on that, I want to be active on this frame. I'm just gonna make it wide. Uh, let's put the tail up here. Streak. Let's increase the width here. Up there. Okay. Goes right there. So it's gonna look like that. Basically. Uh, so then after that, we move it behind the player. Green layer. Behind like that. Uh, move the tail down and then deactivate it. So that now looks like that. Not bad, right? Uh, ooh. The attack streak stuff should be linear here and not curved. Tangent and linear. Better. All right, so we got that. Um, now, I guess all that's left is adding sound and hitboxes. Uh, so for sound, what was I doing? Oh yeah, so right there, uh, add an animation event. The function slips, not to do all. Where is it? Play audio. So you can pick a thing I have here. Um, actually, we just want the swoosh of a player attack. Okay, so we got that. Um, then have the hitbox come out. Oh, I need to make attack data. Attack hitbox, uh, that should be active on that frame only. Could be a box collider, I guess. Oops. Just kind of move it to the shape of the streak. I guess the stomp should only be like that high, really, for the actual hitbox. Um, and then on that frame, it's deactivated. So the hitbox comes out, bam. And that ends. 
Uh, so we got the hitbox. Uh, next step is to make the attack data. Create data, attack data, uh, stomp. So damage should be, I don't know, three damage. Interrupt, ISA stands for interruptible as soon as. So if we look at the frames here, we want it to be actionable about maybe frame five. Let's make that five. Jump cancelable, no. Stun length two. Hit stop, so we can do five. Fine. So knockback. X, maybe one away from the player, and Y, like negative five. I have another attack that knocks people down. It was the axe kick. Yeah, negative five. Oh, and also negative five. Well, whatever. Okay, stomp. Default hit marker. That's the thing that shows up when it lands. Um, and heavy attack hit. Can I self knock back? No. It doesn't need to knock the player back when it lands. Okay, so we've got all that data set up. Uh, we've got it hooked up in the player node, so then we go to X node, which is the graph thing that I've made. Okay, so let's do another attack data. Attack. Stomp, because that's how it knows what animation to play. Attack data should be stomp. Okay. So then we add another link here, kick, direction, down, I don't know if you can see that, uh, there we go, input, uh, okay, so if you do a down, oh, kick and down should take precedence over kick and any, because down is any, and any will always, uh, register first. This is the thing I wrote to just look at the uh, attack inputs. So down and kick should result in a stomp. Let's see what that looks like. Let me uh, zoom in a little bit more here. Oh, it's playing the forward kick. Hold on. Uh, note to self. Might want to cut the video here and then uh, replay it once you figure out what's going on with the stomp. Player's always facing forward. So, down needs to take precedence over forward. Very simple. Let's try that again. Alright. There we go. That, I think, that streak should be diagonal, and the player could stand, could stand and stay a little bit longer in the pose. Okay, that works, I guess. This is invoking, oh, stack overflow. That's good. It's invoking the one stone, cancel stone. Oh yeah. Stack overflow. All right. So now, that, anyway, then now that we've got everything hooked up, we can just tweak this stuff really easily. So stomp. Uh, so that should be diagonal. So let's just move the tail of this sideways like that. And on that frame, the attack streak will probably still be rendering. The tail should be there. Alright, better. And then spend a little bit more time in that pose. Do interruptible as soon as frame 8 then. Uh, player attack data. Stomp. 8. Remember, these are frames out of 12. So that would. Frame 8 wouldn't be like in traditional fighting games where it's 60 frames. This would be actionable on frame uh, 40. Because 12 frames per second versus 60 frames. And it, there's 12 samples per second, I should say. Um, right. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. Yeah, there's just too much time frozen like that. Uh. Player. 
So if they spend too much time frozen like that, we can simply move that like that. Okay. The arms, actually, I want them to rotate, or be done with their rotation earlier. So let's see, back bicep, front bicep. They should be done like then. There we go. All right, let's see how that looks. is a successful stomp right there. Tune in next time where I do a leg sweep or something.